Keith Plage, and welcome to another edition of Nonprofit Spotlight. As you know, a Nonprofit Spotlight is a production of the Volunteer Advisory Committee here at Community Television, and every program we highlight one of the great nonprofits in Santa Cruz, Santa Cruz County, doing wonderful, wonderful work. Uh, and we're really happy today to have uh, Tim Bratton, who's the Executive Director of Gray Bears. Tim, welcome. Thanks for having me. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, as Tim as we were saying earlier, what uh, we're really uh, looking at in doing some of these programs is seeing how the sheltering in place and social distancing is really affecting the furtherance of, of your mission. But uh, before we get into that and then the great programs and so many various programs you have going on at Gray Bears, tell our viewers a little bit about yourself and how you became uh, uh, the executive director of Gray Bears. Well, um, I'm in my 11th year, so it's hard to remember how I got here, but <laughs> I did find my way here uh, uh, back in, I think, 2010. So uh, it was a little different than it is now, obviously. Um, I had a background uh, in event management, and I ran the Vets Hall downtown for uh, 11 years or so, and all the programs. I, uh, at one point, I think we had about 105 different program classes, panel discussions, events, dances, whatever, at that a facility back then. Uh, so yeah, I was uh, brought here. I actually grew up in Chico in the farming community. Oh, is that right? So prunes. Yeah, uh -huh. dried prunes up in Glen County and Butte County, of course, Chico. But so I had a background in agriculture. So it kind of made sense in some ways to move into a, a program that distributes about 22 tons of, of food every week, mostly fresh produce. Uh, seemed like a good match and the board uh, thought it was a good match. So here I am and I've been uh, at the helm here for, yeah, in my 11th year. Well, that's wonderful. And uh, Gray Bear is really an iconic organization here in Santa Cruz, known by just about everybody, I'm sure. Uh, I noticed that uh, a while back you had celebrated your 40th anniversary. Now it would be the 47th or 8th, I guess, for you? Yeah, 47. That's incredible. Years, that's yeah. a wonderful, you know, sustaining the community in so many different ways. Uh, one of the things we wanted to talk about, uh, Tim, is, as you know, we're moving through this COVID-19 pandemic and there's a sheltering in place and uh, the social distancing protocols, which we hope everybody is observing. But for your organization, uh, it's especially an uh, uh, important time because food and food sustainability during this time with people, you know, sheltering in place uh, is even more important than perhaps it has been in the past. So how have your, how's your organization reacting to that? I, I would say in the last 15 weeks, the first week one, everyone, as you know, was uh, panicking a little, or if I use that word, we were uncertain uh, how to navigate such a, a challenging uh, virus and then the pandemic aspects. So in the beginning, we, we kept delivering food every week, but we uh -huh. instituted immediately uh, ways that we were doing it, we changed it. So we, we, had, we had distancing on the line where we assembled the bags. We had PPE, of course, uh, masks, gloves, uh, you know, um, other, some, some people wore uh, plastic coverings over their face. So mm -hmm. uh, we did that. Also the drivers and the uncertainty around, like, am I safe driving in my own car to, to deliver the bags? And so uh, part of this uh, beginning, of course, was the age issue. Um, every, anyone 60, 65 plus was encouraged to absolutely stay home. Right, as exactly. You know, as a senior, sure. As, yeah, as a senior-based organization who, uh, you know, who survives and thrives on uh, 500 weekly volunteers or three to 400 weekly volunteers, uh, the majority of whom are seniors, often over 65. Right. We lost many of them right off the bat. So we had to do kind of a recalibration about how do we find uh, the people to make all of our, uh, especially, you know, the food distribution happen. So it was a big lift there in the beginning. Uh, the community responded. We immediately had, I think, over 100 uh, people call and say, hey, I'm available. I'm, you know, to come in. I'm under, you know, some more 30s and 40s. So who are staying at home? They weren't working. So what better way to give back to the community? So we, uh, we onboarded all of those uh, volunteers and kept the, uh, the program going. And almost immediately, we had an increase of new seniors wanting our services. Some who, were no, who weren't working and having right. to stay home were afraid to go to the market, uh, were afraid generally to go outside. Uh -huh. So we, since in the past 15 weeks, we've increased by about 650 new 
uh, participants in our uh, healthy food program. So it's been a it's been a process. Uh, Community Foundation, Santa Cruz County, uh, Monterey Peninsula Foundation, and others really stepped up. Oh my gosh, they've been amazing and uh, in helping support the financial part of what we do because of course our thrift stores uh, were closed. Our recycling center stayed open, uh, but uh, very few people were coming at that time. And so uh, the thrift store comprises about 40% of our revenue, you know, our earned revenue that keeps us going. Right. So we had a lot of help uh, uh, from the county and for uh, governments. We got toilet paper going in the bags, people, you know, all those things in the early going that people wanted or needed or thought they needed, you know, whatever it was, they needed it. We put masks in there. And so it was, a, and we just have a great staff. The staff really, really kept, uh, stepped up. Our partners, our food partners, growers, uh, both the food banks of Monterey and Santa Cruz were instrumental. And so it's just a, and now I think even despite the resurgence that's happening now, I think uh -huh. there's a feeling that people understand the, the risk, they understand how to protect themselves. And so the, uh, I think just the general temperature, so to speak, not to use that word, but the volume has decreased in terms of the, I mean, everyone's still concerned and should be and doing right. all the right thing, right, right. but but there isn't the, you know, that initial anxiety now. We sort of know what we're doing. We know how to, uh, be, you know, to be as safe as possible in terms of uh, distributing 105, 107 now weekly driver routes around the county, uh, 55, uh, 56 homebound deliveries, door-to-door -door drivers delivering 18 to 25 bags of groceries uh, every week. And then, of course, the sites, which we've had to distance and create the protocols in place to make those sites where maybe 50 to 200 people might show up on any given location that we're distributing. Well, that's wonderful. And really, it's a testament to uh, your strategy and your, your wise uh, uh, staff as well to really to generate the protocols and the kinds of things that you needed uh, early so that now when there does seem to be a bit of a resurgence in virus transmission, everybody's getting a little nervous about some things again, as well they should be, uh, you have the protocols in place to be able to continue your service. And it's interesting as well that, you know, Gray Bear is known for servicing, you know, people who are in a very high risk category, you know, be, to begin with. And so that uh, particularly is impactful to you as an organization to really be able to continue to serve the people. And I know that this work doesn't happen in a financial vacuum. So people who want to make a donation to Gray Bears to continue this work, they can go onto the website and make a donation to help out. Yes, absolutely. And again, the community, uh, the individual donors have been just, you know, I can't be humbled and by the confidence that they have in us and we, uh, are very grateful. Uh, stores are open too. The thrift stores are open. Of course, when you have, you know, a little more than three months or three months at the time, two months, two and a half months of uh, built up where people are home, probably cleaning closets and garages. And, <laughs> you know, they have a lot of stuff that they want to donate. And so as soon as we opened that, uh, almost, you know, the day uh, we, we were flooded with uh, donations, just amazing too in itself. Uh, but just a lot for our, our uh, staff where we were ramping back up mm -hmm. and volunteers to handle all the material we were getting and then trying to sell it to make sure people are comfortable coming to shop, of course, with masks. And yeah. we provided uh, things and distancing. We've got a pretty big property, so they were able to do that. And so, yeah, it's, it's been a process. Uh, we feel like it's it's going pretty well, but we are, we are open now uh, in all departments. Well, that's wonderful. I know you have the great campus over there in Chanticleer, and if people go over there, you know, they can browse for books, you have electronics, they have the e-waste, you have furniture, uh, you have an opportunity to pick up some food, they say, I know you serve a lunch, there's all these various things going on. Um, how has the pandemic, you were mentioning about uh, some of your volunteers being in a little older categories, uh, are you still able to, uh, to get the number of volunteers you need, and are people able to still want to volunteer to help you out? Uh, yes and yes. Uh, you know, the initial time where I mentioned the week one, week two, week three, where all those volunteers who had been coming religiously every week, and we saw them, we get to know them, you know, you know they're like right. friends and family. Uh, some of them, when we made the announcement, uh, many of them were like, oh, you know, I, I, we want to be here. This is like, 
they couldn't imagine not being there. So some continued, we, we, we literally, the county used to tell me, you can't make them leave. You can't, you know. <laughs> uh -huh. So some of them have remained and worked uh, this entire time, but we do have uh, many new great volunteers and many are returning, especially in the office, which has been fantastic to, uh, to take care of uh, uh, bringing in all those new participants. Um, what we do still need volunteers. We're particularly in need in sort of helping our electronics area. We've been getting uh -huh. a lot of audio, you know, so somebody who's a tech oriented uh, a senior, we have a very a great spot that's, you know, protected and, uh, and uh, can help uh, test and, and if they have repair skills, but, you know, older uh, electronics, audio, video gear and stuff like that. But um, yeah, we have other opportunities. Our, our bagging is every Thursday and Friday morning where we assemble the bags that go out at uh -huh. about at seven. You can come for breakfast, great breakfast. And we start at 7.30 sharp and Wonderful. We'll finish about 9.30 or so with the number yeah. of bags we're doing now. So it's pretty fast. It's two sides and it goes quick. We have a lot of opportunities there. And of course, drivers. I've been several times out to Gray Bears, either on Chanticleer, either to kind of browse for books or drop off some electronics, or uh, occasionally we'll, we'll, we'll get some food uh, for one of the one of the church uh, food banks we have. But it's such a family atmosphere. It's such a wonderful experience you have out there. If anybody is interested in spending a couple hours, and that's the wonderful part, I think, of, of being involved with Gray Bears. You can go out and spend, it's not all day. You go out and spend a couple hours, enjoy, relax, you know, maybe have some lunch, pick up some food for yourself, but do something good and be in an atmosphere that's very, really welcoming and warm. And I think that's one of the great aspects of, of Gray Bears that's, that's really struck me every time I've been there. Well, thank you. It's it's uh, it's a joy to come to work. <laughs> it's really, yeah, it, it's just I mean, uh, you know, if I'm on my computer too, I just step out and I go go to the stores. See, you know, there's so much activity. It's it's such a diverse and uh, uh, you know active um, uh, environment, and uh, you know, there's so many people coming and going. You, see, you know, I'll just go out and I'll see three people I know just happen to stop happen to stop by and drop off some electronics. You're right. It's we try to create that, but it's almost it's just been that way for all these years. And uh, there's something about the aging process, Steve. You know that uh, that the beauty of aging is you know and, and as healthy as we say we like to say Gray Bears promotes uh, uh, good nutrition, activity, and social connection as the three pillars. You know the perfect right. recipe for healthy uh -huh. aging, and as we age, I think there's less concern about the things that maybe as, as when we were younger that we used to worry about a right. little more. There's more openness. There's a, there, you know, it's just, it's just part of it. And so uh, that's the neatest thing because we cross generations a little bit where someone will bring their grandchildren, you know, grandchild to volunteer, or, or <laughs> you might have three generations. And it's just, yeah, I, everyone is uh, super friendly and it's, it's yeah, it's just, it's, you're right. It's, it's like the first word in our tagline is connect because everything we kept, kept coming back to this way that, that we just connect people and generations and, and the aging community. Yeah, it's great. And it's interesting that uh, Santa Cruz County uh, demographically is, is getting a bit older. And so it's a wonderful way to fold that, you know, that, that aging generation into opportunities to really continue to be, they live that healthy uh, lifestyle that's really going to help them, you know, age gracefully and enjoyably and really be able to kind of make themselves part, continue to be part of a community. Yeah, and part of this, uh, part of this pandemic that's been uh, most difficult is that we don't have our classes. We have ah. here yoga here, which we've been doing through Zoom. Our, our teacher Susie Mahler has been offering that and getting 70, 80 people on Zoom with their classes. We've had senior support groups with Family Service Agency for both men and women and mixed. Uh, we've had, you know, Spanish and other cooking and other things that we're doing, one-on-one -on -one tech help. So we're doing some of that uh, as everybody is through the, you know, the digital airwaves, but there, it, we miss that plus our events. We've had to cancel several things and we've got our holiday mm -hmm. harvest picnic coming up in September. That would have been the 47th annual that we're, pro we're not going to have this My year. Goodness. Yeah. Um, we're hoping that by December for our annual dinner at the Civic, we'll be able to have that again. And I think that's December 6th, if I'm not mistaken, if we, if we can pull that off, we'll see, you know, yeah. everything's, as you know, 
uh, week to week. Yeah. You know, yeah. if you've been able to introduce uh, the older generation, and I consider myself kind of just entering that, you know, kind of cycle of my life, how to be comfortable doing Zoom meetings and living in a virtual world, I think you really accomplished something. It's uh, surprising, but, you know, we have low-cost laptops and tablets here that, uh, you know, computers. So, yeah, it's, uh, I think what we've found and what we're helping to to nurture is older, age, you know, our aging community being more comfortable with technology. It's, it's uh, exactly, you yeah. know, that, that's been a big part of, of the sort of the new wave and um, it's, seems to be going pretty well so far, but it's not cheap to get an internet connection, as you know, at home or for some of our lower uh, income uh, folks, it's, it's a more of a challenge. So we try to provide for them as well. Yeah. Well, we're hoping that at some point uh, we'll have city or countywide broadband so it will really make it cheap and accessible for people that kind of enter this uh, technology, the virtual age, where people are able to kind of connect with one another. And uh, certainly in this pandemic, when the, when the watchword is we're all in this together, uh, to be able to be together, to be able to share some things, to be able to feel like you're still connected to really what's going on. And it's important to have organizations you know, like yourselves. Uh, to be able to to say you we're still a community and we're still here to help you out. Uh, absolutely, um, you know every four years the seniors council and AAA's across the state do senior needs assessments and uh, what's been showing up last time and is even a higher position in the top ten is senior isolation and uh, loneliness, depression. Mm -hmm. uh, we we want to we're we're. We're, we want to be the remedy for that, and yeah. we want to want everyone out there to know that if they just just come over, you know, if you you have a minute, you can get here. Lift line, what if you, even if you don't drive, there are ways to get here. We're here for you, and we have opportunities, even if it's just to hang out, uh, shop a little, talk, visit. As I said, Thursday, Friday mornings, if you come early, we can, you know, uh, as you said, take a bag of food home, um, uh, great. Uh, fresh produce, amazing organic fresh mm -hmm. strawberries right. this time of year, berries, and uh, and then have lunch or breakfast too. So um, and that's every day, Monday through Friday. We do um, we do lunch here. So we have a great chef, Matt. Uh, Matt uh, is here. It's been amazing too. So yeah, we just want to make sure that you know we're here and the ways that we can outreach to to uh, to visit uh, all of our drivers, visiting our homebound seniors, yeah. about 1,200 now across the county that we're serving. Uh, who just that weekly visit? It's it's uh, yeah. magical, and so we're we're uh, we have a great team of volunteer drivers, amazing. Some who have been here many many years and who have created really deep and lasting friendships and relationships with the people they're serving and meeting. Yeah, it's wonderful work that you do. And we would just remind folks that uh, uh, while there's so many calls uh, on, our, on, our, on our charitable funds and the money, our discretionary income, uh, it's well to remember, you know, the gray bears and to make a donation to them because it is such an iconic and such an essential part. The work that you are doing, the drivers, they, that's essential services. And these aren't just something that just happens while well, Graeber is going to continue. It's a wonderful service. These are essential services to, as we say, a demographic that is the most at risk. And so to be able to not only connect them with the community, but provide them with these essential services, provide them with the sustainability for their diets, when that is such an important task. And, and we applaud you for that. But people want to make a donation. Again, they can go to the website and they can do that to help out a little bit. Yeah, graybears.org. It's easy. G R E Y. We always get that uh, question. Is it A or E? It's E. Uh, graybears.org. And uh, it's easy to give. We really appreciate. Want you to know that every dollar you give us goes a really long way. Uh -huh. um, you know, each bag's about eight or nine pounds. Some of you may be receiving it. We do our best to make it diverse and have some ready to eat items in there. Those great salads with nuts, raisins, and a little dressing. Uh, those are always good. Uh, <laughs> we try to. You know, some you can open up apples, oranges, you know, some fruit. Everyone wants fruit. That's a, a high, a high uh, uh, desirability thing right. in our uh, surveys. And, uh, yeah, so um, you're right. It's, it's, uh, it's, a, it's an important time. Uh, we really are honored to serve 4,300 now uh, seniors every single week throughout the county, uh, more than ever now in South County. 
Uh, right. San Lorenzo Valley's increase. We've added two routes just in Coralito, some of the outer lying more rural areas. If right. you can't drive or you have trouble, you know, just getting out, uh, call us. We'll set you up. Sure. At, uh, numbers on the screen probably or will be. And you can sign up right on the website. Super easy. Don't worry about uh, providing any income information. You can just select a level and uh, or any uh, of that. So we just want to make sure that everybody shares in the bounty that we can provide. Well, it's wonderful, wonderful information to have, particularly it's, it's one thing for people who live kind of in the urban core uh, to be able to access uh, whatever it is that they need during this particular time. But people who are more isolated in San Lorenzo Valley, Watsonville, and South County, to know that they have access or can have access to the things that are really going to sustain them during this pandemic it is such an important thing to do. Yeah, and, uh, uh, we've been doing it a long time. It started uh, with about 100 uh, seniors uh, back in 1973, and, and we were incorporated in 76. Uh, if you remember back, was that Jimmy Carter just got it? <laughs> and uh, and <laughs> they're the Nixon thing. Anyway, that's how far back it's gone. And now we've just passed, you know, the Loma Prieta earthquake, and now this pandemic, and and the downturn of 2008, that Great Recession. Uh, we're here during the hard times. Uh, we uh, depend, of course, on support from so many places, um, but we just keep doing it and, um, and you know, filling the need that, that people want, which is good nutrition, yeah. number one. Well, we're talking need. about the, you know, the generosity, certainly, of our, of our community at large. Uh, who have been your major uh, sources of, of food for your food bags and, and the things that you've been able to distribute? Well, a, few, a couple years ago, we... Uh, uh, Ag Against Hunger was our primary uh, nonprofit in Salinas. They merged with the Food Bank of Monterey County, uh -huh. and in that in that merging was that Graybeards would continue to be uh, able to to basically get whatever we needed. We have a refrigerated truck that can hold up to 12 pallets of food, and we we're down there almost every day. Uh, Second Harvest has been amazing. We've gotten a lot of uh, we get about a third of our food from uh, Second Harvest. Oh, is that uh, right? There in what? in Watsonville, and then a lot of local farmers, Coke Farms, the organic, Lakeside Organic. Um, uh, we get a lot. We also buy food on the market when we are short one uh, in a bag or we feel like we need to supplement something to really round it out. We, uh, we buy food from other uh, distributors we know about. We buy staples that we feel are healthy, if you uh, like lentils, beans, rice. Uh, split peas, um, other things that we get that can really uh, supplement even a protein uh, part of uh, a diet uh, that uh, that um, that we add, and we buy that also. Uh, and then on our recipes page on our website, uh, we have a, a ton of recipes that um, are easy and quick, and also yeah. include a lot of the items that you'll get in a bag, in a weekly bag, one of our bags. And I think it's so important. We had uh, the folks from uh, Second Harvest on one of these shows just a couple of weeks back, and we were talking about the importance of uh, the, uh, the complete dietary requirements for people to be able to kind of tailor the things you're doing to make sure that those diets are not only you know sustainable, but they're also complete and things that people need big part of it. And you know we pick up every day. We're out in the in the community picking up. Uh, uh, what we call rescuing groceries that are uh -huh. don't make it through the checkout line. And we do about 600, 700,000 pounds of food from our markets here, 25 markets. And we distribute that daily and to other agencies um, that we also uh, sort of a quasi food bank oh, idea. Okay. But every day we'll have dairy here. We might have some meat products of rare, but we have those uh, dairy cheeses and uh, milk and uh, and then lots of other things that don't always make it in the bag just because we can't get any quantity of it. Right. We do provide tortillas and bread, though, with every bag. Uh, we, we, do, we have been doing that, so that's an additional uh, staple that we put in there. But that's if you want to come by the property. We do that at 11 a.m. every day, Monday through Friday. Yeah. Kind of we call well, it shopping because yeah. that's what we have, uh -huh. what we picked up that day. Right. And I do think it's wonderful uh, when I talk to the folks uh, at Second Harvest and talk to you about this as well, is you know, how important diet is to people and how important it is as you're aging, particularly to have kind of the well-rounded diet that uh, not only is enough food, but it's the right kind of food to help you thrive and, and really enjoy you know, your years. 
Well, that's a big part of what we do. It's a healthy food, it's a healthy food program for a reason. And uh, we believe that uh, eating healthier, you know, it helps everything. It, 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 it just, yeah, there's, you know, for her, every medical or health outcome is improved when you eat more of what we pr- try to provide in the bag. So, yeah, that's a big, um, a big part of it. It's a big part of our mission. I think, you know, Santa Cruz County is a great example of that. You know, people are really kind of, you know, focused on that and concentrate on it. And that may have something to do with the fact that our transmission levels have been relatively flat and so low. Not only have our protocols been great, but our, our, our ability to access good dietarily complete sustainable food may indeed have contributed to the fact that, uh, that we're, we're really weathering this pandemic much better than some other places. Uh, that's a good point. I, I think you're, pro- you're probably right about that. Um, you know, there's one other positive of what we do, Gray Bears does, which is resource conservation, because when a market has to move things out, we're there for them. And it's, it's still very good food, but it's, it's conserving the resource, yeah. redistributing it and using it, keeping out keeping it out of the landfill, ideally, of course, out of any, every other waste stream and that it's consumed. So, and that's even including our compost uh, tubs here at Gray Bears. We have seven of those churning out about 20 tons of, uh, of compost every year uh, from the food scraps or anything that we couldn't use. We try to uh, compost it here. And um, so we kind of think of this idea of resource conservation, again, as one of our, one of our goals and one of our core uh, elements to our mission. And I think that's such a, a, a wonderful thing to understand that we have so much, we have such an abundance of food, and yet a lot of it uh, is not repurposed when it can be to places where it's really needed. Tim, we got about a minute. Uh, what's the future look like for gray bears over there? Hopefully you'll be with them for another 11 years. <laughs> and I love that. the work you're doing over there. <laughs> but what's it look like for you in the next uh, next few months as we move through the pandemic? We're going to keep uh, moving forward. We're going to keep serving anyone who needs our uh, needs our healthy food program. We're going to continue to uh, try to reuse all the materials from people who are donating household items to us, refurbishing computers and our computer store. Uh, everything that we've done, uh, we're looking at other ways to support this uh, senior isolation uh, issue uh, to try to come up or uh, continue programs that continue to connect uh, people at the Asian community so that we that no one feels isolated and uh, yeah and we've got a great board of directors and uh, just fantastic leadership so uh, we're looking at other options I'll keep on um, that'll be for the next program when we talk about that yeah thank you Tim Bratton uh, executive director of Gravers thanks so much for being here thanks for all the great work and thank all of your people your staff you know everybody over there who makes Grave Bears you know such an essential and really a wonderful and welcoming place to be so thanks so much uh, we'll see you again next time continue the good work thanks I've so much Steve Blake, Thank and uh, tune in next time when we focus on another uh, nonprofit in Santa Cruz County doing wonderful wonderful work on nonprofit spotlight we'll see you then mm-hmm.